meeting. Yeah, kids are dismissed. I'm sorry. I, I meant right after that. Sorry about that, y'all. Y'all was good. I'm proud of you. You're not now, though. The devil got in them as soon as they took out there. Amen. All right. Good night. Now, two weeks from today, a week from Monday, is our big week of remodeling. So I'm going to ask all you men, if you can, take at least one of those days, especially when he's special help Monday and Tuesday. Uh, the Eric's going to take off, try to, Thursday and Friday. Uh, Mark's going to be here. Others are going to be here working. So uh, if y'all can help, and some ladies too, that Monday evening, we need a bunch of ladies because... They're going to clean these lights. They're going to just, oh, well, we got it tore up. We're going to clean everything in here. And so uh, don't forget that. That'll be one week from Monday on the 25th. Uh, everything's falling into place, and it's really hard to redo a whole church auditorium in one week and use that next Sunday. But that's what we'll do by the help of the Lord. Okay? All right, Judges chapter 9 tonight. We're going to move right quickly through this chapter tonight. This is not one of the more exciting chapters of the book of Judges, but it's really good, really good. And so uh, it's, it's fairly lengthy, it's, uh, so I'm not going to actually read every single line and verse, and I'm going to try to hit the high spots, and we'll just go through it tonight. Uh, here in the book of Judges, we've just seen the death of Gideon. Gideon was a great man, and he led God's people to victory with 300 men, whipped a big army of thousands by a miracle from God. Now, his other name was Jerubbabel, Jerubbabel. And so we're going to study tonight about a man by the name of Abimelech. You should know who Abimelech is because Abimelech is a type of the Antichrist. Now, if you don't know what types are, types are stuff in the Bible like this. When, when Moses and them went out in the, in, the, in the desert and the people started wanting water, God said, hit that rock, bam. Now, the reason God did that, that was a type of Jesus. That's a type. He didn't have to do that. He could have made water squirt up out of the ground, fall out of the sky, but he said, smite that rock, right? Now, that's a type of Christ. In 1 Corinthians, it said that rock was Christ. So that's a picture of Jesus Christ. So a type is a picture of. Here, this man Abimelech is a type of the Antichrist. There are at least, they say, 17 or 18, types of the Antichrist in the Bible. He's the second most talked about figure or type typified in the Bible besides the Lord Jesus himself, the Antichrist. He's a man that's coming to this earth soon. I have people say, do you believe the Antichrist is alive right now? And my answer to that is, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. He might, I don't know how he's actually going to appear on the scene. Uh, if he'll, he'll, a lot of speculation about that. There's that, all them movies that come out with a, a woman having the devil's baby about 30 years ago. Picture that. He'd be 30 like Jesus was, the son of Mary, the son of God. He'd be the son of whoever, the son of Satan. And that, in that, uh, in that uh, movie where the child was the devil's child, the woman's name was Rosemary. And that's Hollywood predicting the counterfeit Christ, the Antichrist. All right. Judges chapter 9. And Abimelech, verse 1, the son of Jerubbabel, that be Gideon, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren, that's his brothers and sisters, and communed with them with all the family of his house, his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether it's better for you, either that all the sons of Jerubbabel, which are three score and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. Stop. Here's this man. He comes out and he says, uh, don't, uh, don't you think it'd be better if we just had one ruler over everybody? See, that picture of the Antichrist coming, rising to power, rising to power, and, and that's, that's exactly what he done. And verse 3, his mother's brethren... Uh, sound like a good idea, of course. He said, uh, I want to be king. I want to be the boss. Uh, be careful of anybody who always wants to be the boss. Always. Matter of fact, the, the, word, the word minister, you know what my job is, really? My job is serve, minister. The word minister means servant. 
to serve table, wait on you. Uh, be careful of anybody who always has to be the boss. Uh, the devil said one time, I will ascend. I'm going to be like God. I want to be the big shot. You, you be humble and honor God. If he wants to exalt you somewhere, he'll do it. Don't push yourself. Don't try to exalt yourself. And he said, verse 3, His mother's brethren spake him in the ears of all the men of Shechem these words, and their hearts incline to follow Abimelech, for they said, he is our brother. Picture the Antichrist. Their hearts were inclined to follow him. He just had this charisma, this ability, and these people just said, man, I, I think Abimelech would make a cool leader, don't y'all? Yeah, let's go. And it's like the spirit got them ready to follow him. That's exactly what's going to happen one day. When the Antichrist comes, the world will be sent strong delusion, and the world will all gather together and follow the Antichrist. Verse 4, And they gave him three score and ten pieces of silver out of the house of Baal-Bereth, which wherewith Abimelech hired, look who he got to follow him, vain and light persons which followed him. He hired vain and light persons to follow him. Vain, what does that mean? Empty, empty-headed uh, people just watch TV all the time and whatever the TV tells them, they look. You know, some call them airheads. Some call them blind followers. Some call them people that are not too smart. Some people call them Democrats. Uh, some people just call them, just kidding. Uh, uh, some people call them, it, they're just, they're, 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 they swallow the party line. Whatever they're fed, they, they buy into it. They, be, they buy into global warming. They buy into this. They buy into that. And the world might be getting warmer. So what? If it is, I don't, I don't mean we're supposed to quit making furniture or, or, or coal. That's stupid. God's got enough trees to last to the world. Uh, it's come to an end, brother. And, and, uh, uh, but anyway, he, I got these vain and light persons. Man, I'll preach on that sometime. Vain and light persons. The sort of dodo heads, uh, people that wasn't deep in the scripture and could spot a fake. And he went into his father's house, Ophrah, and slew his brethren, the sons of Jerbel, being threescore and ten, upon one stone. Notwithstanding, yet Jotham, the youngest son of Jerbel, was left, for he hid himself. And all the men of Shechem gathered together, and, uh, to, and all the house of Milo, and made Abimelech king. They voted him in by the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. And when they told it to Jotham, he went and stood up in the top of Mount Gerizim and lifted up his voice and cried and said unto them, Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. Now, we're going to go into a famous parable. This is a famous story in the Bible. You don't hear much about it, but if you read the Bible, this will, this will speak to you. And this old boy, Jotham, he was spared when Abimelech came in and killed all these people and he jumped up and said, Hearken, all you brethren, let me tell you what's going on here. And he spoke this parable. Verse 8. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said to the olive tree, Reign thou over us. But the olive tree said, Nope, should I leave my fatness whereby with they can honor God and man and go be promoted over the trees? So look here, the parable's this. All the trees got together. They could talk like them on the Wizard of Oz. And all the trees got together and said, let's get us a king. And they told the olive tree, hey, you'd make a good king. Why don't you come and be our king? And the olive tree said, man, I got better things to do than that. I've got a, I've got a job to do. I've got a, a, a ministry. Now the olive tree in the Bible is is a picture, of the, it's like the tree of life. As a matter of fact, they say that olives, did you know that olives have more calories than any other, they are free, uh, like nuts and uh, side nuts and avocados? Olives are loaded with it. And that's why I said, should I leave my fatness? Verse 9. Uh, whereby they honor God and man and go to permit motor of the trees? No, turn them down. And the tree said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. Can anybody tell me what the fig tree represents in the Bible? Right. The, the nation of Israel, the curse that the Lord put on Israel, self-righteousness, the fig tree, the fig tree. 
And the Lord said this. Uh, they said, the fig tree, come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said, should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and be promoted over the trees? No, I got better things to do. Verse 12, then the trees said unto the vine. Now the vine represents grapes, the fruit of the vine. Come and reign over us. And the vine said, should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? Stop there again. All kinds of stuff in that. You can do a whole week Bible study on the vine in the Bible. That vine, that grape from one end to the other is a picture of blood. The blood that was shed on the cross, grapes, wine, and blood, wine, and blood all the way through the Bible, all the way through it. When Jesus took that at the Last Supper, he said, this testament is my blood. This cup is my blood. Wine in the Bible is not always fermented. Now, uh, when people say, well, see there, they drunk wine in the Bible. You don't, you don't know they drunk fermented wine because what was in the grapes, according to Isaiah 65, is wine. When you squeeze grapes out, you get wine. I know a guy, and uh, he's always pushing me, trying to get me to say it's all right to drink wine, and I won't. And uh, he said, oh, come on, Danny. Uh, you know, a little wine. He said, he said uh, wine's good for your heart. And I said, that, 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 uh, the grape, you can get the grape juice is good for your heart and leave off the alcohol. Amen. Alcohol ain't good for you. Alcohol ain't good for nobody. Alcohol is the devil's juice. And if you don't agree with that, you either don't know the Bible very good or else you're trying to cover up for yourself or somebody who likes it. One of two things, maybe both. And so tonight, uh, they, they come to the... By the way, more than likely, it was the grape, the fruit of the vine, that Adam and Eve was tempted with in the garden. There's way more scripture for it being the, the grape than it was an apple. You know, Adam's apple, they always say it was an apple. One man said one time, he said, uh, he said, it wasn't the apple on the tree, it was the pear on the ground. Adam and Eve. But the, the truth is, it was more scriptural to teach that it, it, was, it was a grape. I believe it was a grape. Can't prove it, but I about guarantee it. And so the, 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 uh, the vine tree turned them down. So they just went to the briar, blackberry bush or something. Verse 14. Then said all the trees unto the bramble. The bramble is cursed by the ground, thorns and thistles. Come thou and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now therefore, if ye have done truly and sincerely that ye have made Abimelech king, and if ye have dealt well with Jerubbabel in his house, and have done according to his deserving of his hands, for my father fought for you, he said, my daddy fought for you. He risked his life for you. He led you into battle. If you've done right by getting old Bramble Bush Abimelech to be your king and you are risen up against my father's house this day, verse 18, and slain his sons, three score and ten, upon one stone made Abimelech, the son of his maid servant, king over the men of Shechem because he is your brother. If ye then have dealt truly and sincerely with Jerubbabel and his house, then rejoice ye in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out of Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem and the house of Milo, and let fire come out from the men of Shechem and devour the house of Milo and devour Abimelech. Stop right there. Flip over to verse number 56, and we'll see how this all played out. That's exactly what happened. And thus God rendered the wickedness of Abimelech, which he did unto his father, in slaying his 70 brethren, and all the evil of the men of Shechem did render upon their heads, and upon them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jeroboam. So it happened. So Jeroboam got up and he preached. He said, look, if you people's in the will of God by choosing Abimelech, great. Rejoice and have a big time. But if you ain't, fire going to come out and burn every one of you up. Now that's a picture of the Antichrist. They'll be, the 144,000 will witness. The Antichrist will take over the United Nations. 
He'll have a ten federated kingdom under him ruling all over the world, including the United States, what's left of it by then. And brother, the, the prophets will say, fire's going to come down and get you. Elijah and Moses, they'll cut their heads off they'll, or they'll kill them. They'll lay in the street of the city uh, for three days called spiritually Sodom and Egypt where the Antichrist run, who's probably a homosexual. That's why I said he didn't have the desire of women and they called his headquarters Sodom in the, in the tribulation and blam, they're going to cut, get him in the head. His deadly wounds healed. We'll see that happen here in just a minute. And then Jesus is going to come back and burn them all up with fire. That's a mouthful. That's a long study. That's what makes emergent preachers say that Jesus is some kind of divine jihadist because he's going to burn up the world with fire. And they're trying to make Jesus a sinner like he's a terrorist or something. But let's fill in the blanks here. Let's fill in the blanks. Verse 21. So Jotham ran away and went to Beer. Anybody know where that word Beer comes from? It's in Numbers chapter 21, and it means a well. Went to a well. The word Beer. The law of first mention. And they ain't a person in, in Morgan that runs a convenience store can tell you where the first mention of Beer is. You ever heard somebody say you drink a well dry? Uh, and then verse 23. Here's something you can study. And God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. Stop there just a second. We can't take a big, long study on this. But I'm telling you, it's biblical. It's happened more than once. It said God sent the evil spirit and caused the enemies of the Lord to start fighting with each other. Now, we would naturally say, well, it don't really mean God sent it. He allowed it. And he did allow it. And there might be a word, a word study you could do on that word sent. But that's not the only time that happened. Sure did. He put a lying spirit. And then, and then it said an evil spirit from the Lord troubled Saul when David come in and played it. So it, it's like it might be. It might be like Job when the, the Lord... Job couldn't do nothing with the Lord. I mean, with the, with the devil couldn't do nothing with Job until the Lord allowed him. He had to go get permission. Can I, you just let me have him. God said, all right, go. It might be like that. So God, the evil spirits can't do nothing until God allows them. Sure hope and pray that's the way it is. Uh, he, sure, he sure kept them off of me many a time. And uh, I, I heard preachers say, when we get to heaven, when we get to heaven and the Lord replays our life for us, we might see all kinds of plots and things the devil tried to do and God protected us and kept his hand on us. That'd be a blessing, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be something to watch? And you say, oh my goodness, I thought I just got lucky that day, Lord. And the Lord said, no, that day you forgot your, uh, your Bible and had to turn around and go back and get it. There's that accident I spared you from. Or there's this. But God sent that evil spirit between the, his enemies, verse 24, that cruelty done to the three score and ten sons of Jeroboam might come and their blood be laid upon Abimelech, their brother. Now, let's go a little faster here. I'm going to get to this murder of him. 25, they set liars in wait for him on the mountaintop. That's the way they did in, the, in battles. I've been studying a little bit about Baptist history. And some of you may not know, but our Baptist forefathers fought a lot of battles. Back in the Revolutionary War in the 1700s, down here in Kings Mountain, North Carolina, a big battle was fought down there. And over in the mountains, on over here, on the other side of Asheville, and they said Baptist preachers and their congregations were largely instrumental in fighting them battles. Which means them Baptist congregations were instrumental in preserving America's freedom and what we enjoy today. We'll get into that some other time when we get into Baptist history and heritage. There's a reason we're Baptist. There's a big bunch of reasons. And so they are, uh, and there's a reason we're not a no-name brand church. If you don't know name brand, you don't know what it is. Uh, but uh, they, they led liars in wait and robbed them. See verse 25, they robbed them. Robbers. The Bible talks a lot about robbers and thieves. Has anybody in here ever been robbed? 
Okay, that's, that's more than I thought. Uh, I'm trying to think if I ever been robbed. Yeah, I have. Sure I have. I picked up a hitchhiker one time, a long time ago, and I, I, I'd been playing ball with some boys. And I was old, sweaty, and when you play ball, I just had on, had on, you know, t-shirt, and shorts, and, and socks, and and I stick my wallet up underneath my seat, and uh, I picked this boy up hitchhiking, and he sat in the back seat, and uh, I took him somewhere and let him out, and I got home, my wallet was gone. I had. I had fifty dollars in it, but that, a long time ago, that was a lot of money. Fifty dollars twenty-five years ago, about two hundred now, and uh, and I went, Ugh! and I I've had that happen, and it's an awful feeling getting robbed. Uh, that's a bad feeling. And that's what they done. They set these robbers robbers out. And verse twenty-six, they came and went over to Shechem, and the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. Big mistake. And they went out to the fields and gathered the vineyards and trod the grapes and made merry and went into the house of their God and did eat and drink and cursed Abimelech. Cursed Abimelech. So now you got them a division. In them all I'm sorry, I got that wrong in verse 26. And Gael, the son of Ebed, said, Who is Abimelech? Who is Shechem that we should serve him? Is he not the son of Jerubbabel? And Zabel, his offer said, serve the men of Hamar, the father of Shechem, for why should we serve him? And would to God this people were under my hand, then I, would I remove Abimelech, and so forth and so on. Let me point out a couple things right here. Look at verse 33. There it is again where it said the sun is up. That's not a mistake in the Bible. The sun does come up. Now scientists said, no, the sun don't move. Yes, the sun does move. I, the, 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 we just see in the earth rotates around. Yes, I understand that. When we come up, it looks like the sun's coming up. It looks like the sun. So it's not wrong. The newspaper, the, the observatories everywhere say sun up, sun down. Don't let stuff like that bother you. When you see stuff in the Bible like sunrise and stuff, don't ever think, well, see there, the Bible's not scientific. When you see stuff like it wasn't really a whale that fought, swallowed Jonah because there wasn't whales in that part of the world. Don't let stuff like that bother y'all. Listen, this old book's been tried and proved so many times it ain't even funny. You ain't gonna find nothing wrong in here. When a man finds something wrong with this, it's, it's the problem's in his head. Listen, there's whales anywhere God wants them to be. And a whale is a fish. They changed the definition and call it a mammal. I got it. Like they've changed the definition of gay. That don't make it right. A, a, a whale is a great fish, but if you don't believe it, watch one jump up out of the water and swim around. It can be a mammal and a fish too. Don't don't worry about like your bowels. They say, see your bowels. A, the bowels in the Bible are your insides, like a bowl, bowel, bowl. The, all your insides in a bowl. So your heart it's just that organ. No, your heart is the inside of you, your feelings, your seat of emotions. Don't ever let something in the Bible that seems to be unscientific bother you. This old book's so far ahead of science, they can't even get up but about every 2,000 years. You don't have to be a bit worried about it. You know who has to change their beliefs every few years? Science, not the Bible. Now, if something's really scientific and really true, it don't contradict the Bible. But where it does, it's science falsely so-called. It's what the Bible calls it. So uh, we'll stick with this and we'll find out who's right one day. Amen. Let God be true and every man a liar. All right. Now let's, let's see this murder here and how this woman kills the Antichrist. We're going we're gonna to jump ahead here for time's sake. They got to fighting here and fussing and fighting and fussing and fighting. And Abimelech fought, verse 45 against the city all that day. Look how mean this guy was. And he took the city and slew the people that was therein and beat down the city and sowed it with salt. Why did he do that? So they couldn't grow no crops. They ruined the ground. Verse 46. And when all the men of the tower of Shechem heard that, they entered into a hold of the house of the god Bereth false God. And it was told Abimelech that all the men of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. And Abimelech got him up to Mount Zalman. If, if, if you could push this type far enough, all this stuff is prophetic. If, if you just, you'd have to be a lot smarter, smarter than I am. 
to get it all. He and the people that were with him, and Abimelech took an axe in his hand and cut down a bough from the tree and took it and laid it on his shoulder and said to the people that were with him, What ye have seen me do, make haste and do as I have done. So all these people followed him. They went and got them out, cut down a tree, about and followed Abimelech and put them to hold and set the hold on fire upon them so that all the men of the tower of Shechem died, about a thousand men and women. Now, verse 50, Then went Abimelech to Thebes and encamped against these, wanting to take over it. World dictatorship. He's a world ruler. He, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, claiming himself that he is God. That's what the Antichrist does. There was a strong tower within the city, and thither fled all the men and women and all there the city, and shut it to them and get them up to the top of the tower. And Abimelech came unto the tower and fought against it and went hard under the door of the tower to burn it with fire. Here, look at verse 52. And a certain woman, isn't this weird? Didn't that same thing happen back there a few chapters ago? A certain woman cast a piece of a millstone upon Abimelech's head and all to break his skull. All to old English I mean, for, she was trying to bust his head and that's exactly what she did. She busted his head. And he called hastily unto the young man his armor bearer and said, draw thy sword and slay me that men say not of me a woman slew him. And his young man thrust him through and he died. So here's another picture of the Antichrist getting a wound to the head, wanting to take over the world, and a woman does this, just like Sisera back a few chapters earlier. That's weird. Now, a millstone is a, is a round, like, they, you, like you've seen them. They're about, they can range anywhere from that big, about like them offering plates, three inches thick, to as big as a wagon wheel, five inches thick. Now, I don't think this woman picked one up that big and cast him. But she was way, way up on top of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, the tower there. And uh, if that tower, if, was taller than that light right there, and I'm standing right here, and you took a, a, uh, a solid piece of granite that thick and that round, weighing 30, 40 pounds, and threw it off something that high, it'd give you a headache, son. You would not forget. It'd knock your brains out. And that's exactly what she did. She took this millstone, a piece of one, probably broke. Ooh, that'd be awful, wouldn't it? Half a millstone. I'm out here, yes, we'll burn you. We'll burn you. I'm taking over the world. Yay! Long live Abimelech. Bam! And a woman does this. Now, remember a few chapters ago, we, we studied about that. And I don't know this, but the only way you can look at that is when the Lord comes back, he burns it. We'll see at the last part of the chapter. His deadly wound was healed in the, in the tribulation. The church is a woman. And Israel is pictured as a woman. My guess would be Israel will help the Lord stomp the Antichrist and, and take him into, uh, into the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophet are, you know, and he'll be tormented day and night forever, never, 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 never. Um, Sisera was that guy back yonder. The Revelation talks about the Antichrist. Uh, the Bible talks about the, when, when Adam and Eve sinned, you know what he told, told him? He said, uh, thou shalt bruise his head, and he'll bruise your heel. Always that wound to the head. You know how David killed Goliath, the picture of the Antichrist? Bam, right in the head. And then cut his head off. That's a picture. All that stuff. You see, millions of things happen back in the Old Testament, and God chose these stories to put in to help us, to teach us, and to tell us what's coming. Tell us what's coming. You say, well, you really believe all that stuff in the Old Testament's going? Yeah, it's a picture of what's coming. Like the plagues in Egypt, the water turning to blood. The, the, the sores on men, all that's coming again, y'all. It's coming again. You read your Old Testament, you can, you can tell, predict the future 
reading these Old Testament stories. And it's sad that most Christians never even read. You ever read your Old Testament and you get hung up in Chronicles or somewhere and you think, good night, what is... It seems so tedious, and so that's the Lord testing you to see how if you mean business or not, and you trudge right on through the stuff, and then you start seeing stuff like this, searching for treasure. If you're searching for treasure here tonight, you wouldn't just look around on the platform. You'd go out there and dig for it. It's buried out there, and that's where you find stuff in the Bible. You have to search for it with all your heart. So the Antichrist has a deadly wound, the, the young man kills him, and then they, they come and burn that place. And, and God rendered the wickedness of Abimelech upon his head. Now, Pharaoh, Nebuchadnezzar, Goliath, Sisera, Abimelech, uh, all these guys are types and pictures of the Antichrist. Study them men like that in the Bible. You'll get a good picture of what's coming in the future in this world. Somebody have a hand raised? Okay. All right. Uh, so the, the Lord does this, and I want to show you this, and let's spend just a minute on this, and I'll let y'all go. Uh, verse 56, thus God rendered the wickedness of Abimelech. Man, every time I see that, that's a lot in the Bible too. Something can happen years ago. And you think God's forgot about it. But then he said, Thus God rendered the wickedness of Abimelech. Can I tell y'all something tonight? You really may think you've got away with something, but it all, about the time you think God's forgot all about it, bam, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. It'll get you. Now, if you repent, God will go easy on you. He'll go easy. But if you just keep going on and on and on, and thus God will render your wickedness upon your own head, buddy. That's an awful thing to say, isn't it? But it's the truth. It's the truth. People these days got this idea of, ah, oh, God's good. I'm saved by grace. I can do anything I want to. It don't matter. His blood covers all this. Now, all of that's true, but he'll, he'll render on your head, buddy, one of these days. If you sow to your flesh... You will of your flesh reap corruption. If, if, if He that doeth evil shall receive of the evil he has done, and there is no respect to persons. Yeah, just because you're saved don't mean you just get away with stuff scot-free. If you repent, he'll go easy on you. But if you don't, man, he can smack your head off if he, if he needs to. Thus God rendered. Man, when I read that, it just sends cold chills to me. Thus God rendered the wickedness of Abimelech. Oh, Abimelech thought, man, I've got it made. I've killed all my enemies. I'm on my way. I'm going to rule the world. Bam! He's gone. Thus rendered God his wickedness upon his own head. All right, I'm going to stop right there. Anybody got a question or a comment? Who? Yes. 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 Yeah. Ad Adonakim had 666 children. There's all kinds of them back there. 